everybody. Today, we're going to be going over some basic Python, I guess, Python tools that are really, really commonly used in the field of astronomy research. So I'm going to be showing uh, three different things. So we'll start first with um, how do you even get into Python? Like, what do you need to install and stuff like that? Well, the easiest way, in my opinion, is to install something called Anaconda. So let's look at that. I'll share my screen. Ugh, spoiler alert. Okay. So this is Anaconda. So it's free. You don't have to pay. And it includes tons of Python libraries in it immediately when you install it. So um, you can just like click download for the various different things. So I guess on here it says only Mac, but um, you can install it. And yes, so it includes lots of different packages and libraries and um, it's open source. So it's being constantly updated and you can use Conda to install other things that Python and your research needs will need. So you install Conda and then it gives you access to Python as well as all these libraries immediately. I think we don't have to go over this, but yes. So Conda will be really, really useful. So you can install it here. So it's conda.com slash download. And then once you've got that installed, you should have Python and access to Conda. But first, then before we go over getting anything else, we'll go over something useful in Conda called environments. So environments are basically, I guess, enclosed, I don't know how, how else to say, enclosed environments where you can specify which packages are in that environment. And this is useful because like, sometimes you'll be working on research and a certain project will call for a certain, I guess, a certain version of a package and a different project will call for a different version. And so, you know, if you install one version on your general, you know, computer or whatever, it's going to be a hassle to uninstall that and then switch to the new version every time you switch between the two pro um, projects. So what you want to do is create an environment in Conda. Ideally, every time you have a project that needs a certain, I guess, version of, of some package or whatever. So we'll walk through quickly how to do this because I don't want this to be like a to-do video on this just to be an introductory video. So basically, so every time you install something using Conda, Anaconda, you're going to want to put Conda first in your terminal. So um, basically, if you're running Mac or Linux, I think you have to be running Mac or Linux, you'll put Conda like this says, and then for to create an environment, you do create dash dash name, and then your environment. And then voila, you've created an environment on your computer for, for Conda. If you want to install something else, like a Python package using Conda, you put Conda and then install instead of create, and then the name of the package. So it's that easy. A lot of packages allow you to be installed using Conda. Some don't, which we'll go over later, but basically that's how you do it. Okay, so next, the next step for environments, switching back to environments, um, it'll ask you if you want to proceed, you say yes. And then um, this creates, yeah, this creates an environment, but there's no packages installed in this environment yet. So here's how you can install it with packages in it. So you can specify the Python type or the version, Python version. So this one is installing Python 3.9. So uh, yeah, so Python itself has many versions. So if you're working uh, with some, I guess, packages that require a certain Python version, you'll want to make multiple environments that create or that include those different Python versions. Very important. And then here shows how you can include a specific package like Sci SciPy. SciPy is a very useful package with a lot of different scientific tools. And then here it gives an example of creating the environment with Python in it, I think this means the most recent Python version, if you don't put a equal sign, it was most recent. And then you can install a package later after you've 
installed or after you've created the environment. So you've created the environment and then the second line that you could put is a line to install SciPy within your environment name afterwards. So you can always add packages to your environment at, later. So you don't need to create the environment immediately with all the packages you need. Although sometimes it is useful to do that. But anyway, you can add them later. And just remember, it goes conda, then install or create. So create for creating the environment or install if you're adding a package. Dash n, that just means like the name. This is the name of your environment. So dash n is, is saying that what comes after it is the name. And then whatever you're including. So SciPy, if it, you're installing a new package, and Python, if you want your environment to be created with Python, etc. Okay, you can also you can also create it with specific versions of packages, which is what I said at the beginning. Sometimes it's useful to do that, right? Again, it gives a two line version. And then here, you can see that you can also create it with multiple packages. So it's not just one like SciPy. You can do the Python version and also multiple packages at the same time. And this is useful because sometimes packages will conflict with each other and you need very specific package versions to work with each other. And sometimes you want to try to install it all at once and see if it all works together. And sometimes it won't. So you should be careful about that. I guess <laughs> uh, it'll tell you if they like conflict with each other though and then you can somehow figure it out I don't know how you would figure it out but sometimes somehow you would figure it out it'll tell you so that's what's good about installing all at the same time it'll tell you if there's conflicts or not between the packages okay so this was the short preview to managing environments in conda yeah so this is all done in your terminal by the way. But if you want to actually do coding, how would you easily go about doing coding? So the the best tool, in my opinion, is something called Jupyter Notebook, which I've shown in, in my previous uh, video of Research Basics. So Jupyter Notebook is a really, really, really useful tool for coding in Python because it runs in your browser. So you don't need to install what's called an IDE, which allows you to code in a certain like program, save that, pro save whatever your code is and run it um, after you've saved it. You don't need to do that. When you run Jupyter Notebook, it'll pull up inside of your browser and it'll, um, I guess, create this little very useful, I don't know how else to say it, I guess, software or something, I don't know, uh, where you can run your code and edit your code and everything directly in the browser. It's very, very useful. You don't need to create like separate Python code files or anything, have IDs and nothing. You just need to run it all in your browser. Really great. Okay, so here we go. So you install Jupyter Notebook with this. You pip install. Uh, can you con install Jupyter Notebook? I'm not sure. Uh, let's actually look this up. We'll look this up beforehand. Con install Jupyter Notebook. Yes, you can. Okay, so you can install it using Anaconda. But for some reason, they only have pip here. So you can also do conda install notebook. But pip here is basically Python's version of installing packages. So conda itself is like separate from Python. Conda is something to, useful um, to use conda or to use Python within. Ugh. <laughs> but Python itself has a way to install packages and pip is that. So uh, you'll install, you can use it. Um, you can basically enter one of your environments. How do you, let's actually look this up real quick. Conda activate, yes, okay, reminded me. You can enter one of your environments by typing conda activate then one of your environments. Um, and then once you're entered into that environment, you can pip install anything and it'll install it into that environment only. You can also conda install into that environment only. Um, but you need to be inside of the environment. So you need to activate the environment before you pip install anything to put it inside of that environment. 
okay slash jupiter notebook uh you can look at my previous video to see me typing code into jupiter notebook to see what it looks like but anyway there jupiter notebook comes with all sorts of cool little tricks and tips and stuff i could go over tons of them but i'm not going to since this is just an introductory video if you guys would like to see more in depth into jupiter notebook i can do that in a separate video anyway so yes jupiter notebook is great simple easy way to code in python i use it all the time next we're going to go over astropy this is the last thing we'll go over today so astropy says here is a community effort to develop a common core package for astronomy in python so it includes a ton of stuff that will help you in your research when you're coding so one of the things that we'll go over today that is used basically all the time is skycord as an example of one of the things that that astropy can do so astropy is just general package has tons of things in it and skycord is one of them that used all the time so basically in astronomy you're going to have to deal with like locations of things right coordinates of things and there are tons of different coordinate systems there's tons of information out there in terms of like different ways to describe locations of objects and like the distances to them and everything it's super hard to keep con uh, keep your uh, wrap your head around it so sky cord is the easiest way to deal with all this we'll look at this in general so basically you can put so if you when you um i guess use a package at the beginning of your code so this is not in terminal this is now in jupyter notebook or some i guess text file or something wherever you're coding you'll put this import thing so every time you use a package you have to import it basically telling the python file that you are using a certain package so for example here uh we're going to import sky cord from this specific part of astropy so astropy dot coordinates we're going to import sky cord so from that import sky cord some direct uses in this example here so for example you can use sky cord to define some location in certain units so for example it gives two units here or two numbers here and the unit is degrees so this location or this coordinate is 10 degrees 20 degrees this is the defaults for the certain frame now there are different frames in astronomy so you'll um, it defaults to this one but there are many different ones like i don't know galactic things like that uh you can also do three coordinates one degree two degree three degree right because it specifies as degree uh in astronomy there's also you can also do hour minute second sometimes so for example here oh here look there's frame equals galactic like i said um but if you do hour minute second you'll want to do strings so strings in Python are different than numbers. So to use a string in Python, you'll want to do quotation marks, do single or double, doesn't matter which one, but make sure they're the same on both sides of whatever the string is. So this specifically is saying there's a space here to distinguish the two different um, numbers within the string. So there's hour, minute, second for this, and then hour minute second for this and then the frame is galactic so there's so many different ways you can determine location in astronomy so sky cord is super useful because you input it into one and then you can actually change it and ask it to convert it to some other unit etc which is super useful super 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 useful you can also do things like add a radial velocity super cool um here is also pretty interesting um you can t multiply by the units to give it a unit you don't have to specify the unit here like it does here so this u here you might be curious why do you have to put this u before the degree it's because up here you have to import units as well because units are a separate thing within astropy um so this astropy units includes all sorts of units from meters kilometers like distance like that to i don't know jewels degrees like this so many different things so you can always multiply by the unit as long as you import the unit as a package in your code yes 
So lots of cool different things. Let's look at, see if there's any other things here about it. Well, this is cool. I didn't know this either. So there's this cool get constellation function where um, it'll tell you the constellation or constellations of the coordinates in your sky cord. <laughs> so there are all sorts of cool little things here that you can do with the location that's included inside of this AstroPy stuff. Um, but yeah, okay, so this one. Finds the nearest on-sky matches of this coordinate in a set of catalog coordinates. So you give it a catalog, all sorts of catalogs of objects in astronomy. You give it one of those catalogs, and it'll give you the nearest object to your coordinates. Yeah, so stuff like that. Find objects near, close to your coordinates. Super easy. And it'll also give you the on-sky separation between those. Cool, cool stuff. Yeah, all sorts of stuff you can do with this. You can also calculate the separation between two coordinates. Cool, cool stuff. Yeah, so lots of stuff you can do with Skycord. That was just one example of one thing within AstroPy. Well, I also talked about units. Units were another thing. Oops, I only wanted to talk about one thing. But anyway. Skycord, one of the amazing things you can do with AstroPy. Yeah, so you'll be using AstroPy a lot in astronomy. There are also lots of other cool packages you can use in Python that you'll run into uh, just to like solve the problems that you want to like research and research. Python is a tool that we use to solve all these problems. So yeah. Okay, that's it for today's video of introducing some cool tools that we use in astronomy research. If you want to, me to go more in depth into any of those, let me know. Otherwise, this is kind of just like an introduction. Um, yeah. I'll see you guys in one of the next videos. Bye-bye.